In the diagram, the circle with center O has the equation x squared plus y squared equals to 20. So that's this one. x squared. No, it's not how you do x squared, Kev. <laughs> x squared plus y squared is 20. Sorry, guys. Exam nerves. Um, G is T0 is the center. A common tangent touches the circle D and F such that D, which is... Uh, okay, that's, okay, that's interesting. So that's information that they haven't shown us. Um, P minus 2 lies in the fourth quadrant. Okay, cool. Given that D lies in the smaller lies on the smaller circle, show that P is 4. That's very easy. Because we have the circle's equation, we know P is the X, minus 2 is the Y. So you're just going to go fill that in, into the circle's equation. And then you're going to end up with this being a positive 4. That's going to be 16. So technically, P would be plus or minus 4 when you take the square root. But because it's in the fourth quadrant, uh, x has to be a positive, and so therefore p would have to be 4. Point E, which is 6 and 2, which is over here, is the midpoint of df. Determine the coordinates of f. Okay, well that's easy because we now know what p is, so we can use the midpoint in reverse. Um, if you have d, e, and you have f, and so then D would be 4, negative 2, E would be 6, 2, and then F is X and Y. So just use the midpoint theorem. Um, we know that with the midpoint theorem, you normally use this information and this information to find this one. So you'd normally say X1 plus X2 over 2 and Y1 plus Y2 over 2. Now we can do that again, but you would say, um, so for example, point D, let's let that be point 1, and then let's let point F be number 2. So you would say 4 add x over 2, but we know the answer. We know that the x value midpoint is 6, so we can make it equal to 6. And then for the y, we can say minus 2 plus y over 2, and we know the y answer must be 2. Okay, so you're just going to solve this one now. Take the 2 over to the other side, so that'll become 12 because 6 times 2 is 12, and then if you take the 4 over, you would end up with 8. And then here you can multiply this 2 up, so you end up with minus 2 plus y equals to 4, and then y would be 6. So the coordinates of f then would be 8 and 6. This question says, determine the equation of the tangent df. Okay, that's an easy one, hey guys, I don't know why that's worth 4 marks, because we have the coordinates, well, I guess we have to go get the gradient and all of that, but it's not difficult. So we can go work out the gradient of df. Gradient formula is y2 take away y1 over x2 take away x1. So you could, for example, use this as point 0.1, this is point 0.2, doesn't really matter. Um, minus 2 minus 6 over 4 take away 8. And if we simplify that, that should give us 4 minus 8, it should give us 2. Okay, so we know the gradient of that line now. To find C, you plug in any point on that line. You can plug this point, this point, or this point. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use this point. So 6 is the Y, 8 is the X, and so you end up with that and that. So the final answer for that question would be Y equals to 2X, take away 10. Um, y equals 2X, take away 10. Calculate the value of t, show all your working. So I think what we can do is we already know this equation of that line. And we know that this is the radius of um, the circle. And this one is the tangent. So we know that a radius and a tangent are perpendicular. So because we know this one's equation, we know its gradient, all of that stuff, that'll easily allow us to calculate this equation. Once we have this one's equation, we can literally just plug in x as t, y as 0, and then solve. So we know that these two lines are perpendicular. So we know that their gradients, when you multiply them, so the gradient of fd, when you multiply that with the gradient of fg, mathematically it must give us minus 1 because we have a tangent that is perpendicular to a radius. Okay, um, And when two lines are perpendicular, the gradient multiplied always gives us minus 1. So we know this one's gradient. We calculated it there. It's 2. So if you had to work out the gradient of fg, it'll give you 
negative 1 over 2. So we now know this one's gradient. So we can then say y equals to minus a half x plus c. And then to find um, c, you plug in any point that you know on that line, which is just going to be this one, which is 8 and 6. So the 6 is the y, 8 is x. And so 6 is going to be minus 4 plus c. And so c is going to be positive 10. So the equation of this line is y equals to minus a half x plus um, 10. Now that we know that one's equation, it's very easy to find out point t because all that we do now is we realize that t is the x, 0 is the y. So 0 is the y, x is t. And so we end up with that over there. I'm going to take the half to the other side or the half t. And then if I try to get t alone, um, I'm going to divide 10 by a half. And so t should eventually, must not give you 5, but instead 20. So the coordinates of t are 20. This one over here, 4.5. Determine the equation of the larger circle in that form over there. Okay, don't worry about that form right now. All we do is we just use the standard formula for a circle, which is x minus um, a y minus b and so if we have the center as 20 and 0 then it'll just be x minus 20 y take away 0 and then the radius okay so we don't know what the radius is right now but we can quickly work that out by just plugging in any x and y on the circle on the edge of the circle so we could use this point over here which is 8 and 6 you could also go work out the distance between those two points. It's the same thing, actually. So we could go 8 minus 20. Um, the y value is 6. And so if you just type this on your calculator, you don't even have to get r by itself. Just keep it as r squared. You get 180. So there, you don't need to get r alone. So we know the equation of the circle now in um, normal standard form. So we could say x minus 20, y minus 0 is just y, and then r squared is 180. So this is now your circle's equation. So how do we take it from there to there? Easy, just multiply all the brackets out. So we make double bracket, then like that. And so that's going to eventually give x squared. What I'm doing is I'm multiplying the brackets together. Minus 20x, minus 20x, plus 400, plus y squared equals 180. Okay, now I'm just going to simplify. So minus 20 minus 20 is minus 40. And then, okay, so they want the x squares first. Okay, we'll get that just now. And then um, we've got a plus y squared, plus a 400, minus 180. You see they want everything to come on to the one side. Okay, so they want the x squares first, so x squared. Then they want the y squared. There it is. Then they want the x, which is minus 40. Then they want the y, there is no y, and then uh, 400 minus 180, that is 220. There we go. Okay. The smaller circle must be translated by k units along the x-axis to touch the larger circle internally. Calculate the possible values of k. For two circles to touch internally, or let's first talk about externally. Externally is when two circles look like this. That is external touching. This is external. Then internal is when you have something like this. That's internal. So they want to take this circle and they want to move it this way so that we get those scenarios taking place. Now it'll happen twice. It could happen where the small circle gets there, but it could also happen if we move it to there. So I think all that we really need is to work out this coordinate here where it's touching the x-axis. And then we could work out this coordinate here. And I think from that we can work out, and we could probably also get this coordinate here. And from that we could work out how much we need to move in order to make that all happen. So let's go work out. Um, so to get the x-intercepts of the small circle, so x-intercept of smaller circle, we obviously just make y zero. So if we have x squared plus y squared equals to 20, then x squared plus zero is equal to 20. And so x squared is 20. So x would be, if you take the square root of that, and so that's gonna be uh, plus or minus two square root five. 
And so that would be this point and yeah, so minus two squared five. And then this one would be two squared five. Yeah, I think it's actually better to get this coordinate. Oh no, both would actually work. Now we're gonna quickly go get this coordinate over here. Um, so although, I don't know if you remember from this circle earlier, this big one, we went and worked out its equation earlier and we found out that r squared was 180. So from that we can get its radius, which is six square root five. So then if I know that this coordinate here is 20, then if I just minus six square root five, I can easily know this coordinate. And if I plus six square root five, I can get this coordinate. So this one would be 20 minus six root five, which just stays 20 minus six root five. And then this one would be 20 plus six root five. Okay, so to be able to get this circle to land up over here, then I'm gonna have to move it from this coordinate, which is two square root five, all the way to 20 plus six square root five. So how do I work out that horizontal distance? Well, what I could do is I could say scenario one, and I could just say 20 plus six square root five minus uh, two square root five, and that's gonna end up giving 20 plus four square root five. So that's the one scenario. The other scenario is that I end up getting this circle, um, this point over here. And so to work out that translation, I would just say this value minus this value. And so scenario two, 20 minus six square root five minus this, y, this x value, which is also minus. And so that ends up becoming um, 20 minus six plus two, it's gonna be minus four square root five. So those are the possible values of k. And then if we want those as decimals, well, this one is gonna be uh, 20 plus four root five, which is gonna be 28.94. And then the bottom one, which is 20 minus four square root five, is gonna be 11.06 if we round to two decimals.